So you're going to pick um, one of the other organic objects from the list you've been given. Um, and you can either do that on Tuesday or you can do it on Thursday. Or you, some of the other objects are going to be more industrial, like glass or a fork or something like that. But I do want you to do one of the, I, I want you to pick one of the organic objects. And so that's why I have vegetables and fruits and in this case, garlic. So I'm just going to do this for the purposes of the demo. So what I've done is I put the object, remember the drawing is specifically and entirely about the single object, the single form, and trying to um, bring as much representational analysis of that back to your drawing. You're going to do it on a 9 by 12, so you're going to have to cut down your drawing paper, um, if possible, um, to 9 by 12. Um, and you can kind of keep it in the center, a little bit off center, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the main and primary focus of the drawing. And so you're trying to really convey and communicate <clears throat> the representational analysis of the form Again, bringing that information back to the page. So what I've done is I've, I have a little light, like a little desk lamp that I put over it, which I would encourage you to do because you'll get more of a, of a kind of a transitional shadow from the cast shadow, which will ground it more on the ground plane. Um, and so you just, you, you want to have like a full value range throughout the object. Um, so you can see it's the lightest highlights right up in here as it starts transitioning with the with the other properties of light turning this way, you're getting more shadow on this side. There's some more detail down here. And the core part of the cast shadow is gonna be the darkest part of the whole drawing. Um, and so it's just really important that, that you, if, you, if it's possible, try to put a light source on it. You'll still get a cast shadow um, of the object when you place it on a white piece of paper. But if you, can, if you have a desk lamp or something and you can add that extra element um, to, in, to amplify um, the properties of light on it, you'll get more of a range and it'll be easier to draw. Um, so just make sure whatever you end up picking from the organic list that you do place it on a white piece of paper. It can just be a piece of copier paper, it doesn't, it, which is basically eight and a half by 11. But just don't put it on like a, a darker ground or anything. Make sure it's on a white piece of paper. It doesn't matter what kind of paper it is. So for this drawing, you're gonna be using your Statler Lumograph graphite pencils, and you're gonna be wanting to use the full range um, that you were asked to buy, if, if possible. So you're gonna be using your HB pencil, your 2B pencil, your 4B pencil, your 8B pencil. There's also a 6B and a 5B. If you have one of those, that's great too. You're gonna to wanna to use a kneaded eraser, and you're gonna to wanna to use your Statler eraser, and then you're gonna probably maybe wanna use a chamois and you're gonna probably wanna use a, a blending stomp. Um, so first off, the HB pencil is what you are going to use um, to kind of let, the HB pencil, is, it, it falls right between hard and soft. And the H is obviously hard and the B refers to soft. And this is, this is the pencil you're gonna to use to kind of lay out all your initial structure and line work. And really, throughout the whole drawing, really, really start considering pressure. Okay, the HP pencil is just basically for establishing and trying to articulate the whole form itself. Okay, and then and just don't get really heavy handed with it at all. Like all you're trying to do, you wanna keep it relatively this light. So I'm just doing like a little section of overlapping planes here. Um, and just make sure you, you don't want to, you can use your HB pencil to kind of do like your lightest kind of tones or values within the drawing. Okay. And that's, that's okay. But you do not want to use it to do any kind of medium neutral, um, values like around 40 to 50 to 60%. Like you, you, you just, you, you want to use it for the highest on the value scale, the highest values, meaning the lightest values and you want to use it for the structure of the drawing. Um, and then as you move up numerically with your pencils, like this is a 2B, that's when you'll start introducing your darker leads, and this will start helping you establish darker values, okay? Um, and then obviously you will 
go all the way up to 8B, and there's only going to be a few spots in your drawing that are going to have that dark of a value. But you can see that it gets, it basically essentially almost goes all the way to black. Okay. But the point is, is that you don't just want to use one lead. You want to use all your leads. Um, so don't think that you can do the whole drawing with like your 2B pencil. It just, it, 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 you'll see that you, it'll look like it doesn't have a full range. Use your whole range um, of pencils. Now, the most important thing about rendering is a, a lot of times people will do things like this or like this or, you know, almost like a, or they'll do hatching, something like that. If you want really subtle transitions in rendering, what you want to do always is in a really tight circular motion. And obviously this is very laborious and time consuming, but it will also make your drawing look a lot more representational. You want it, and this, I'm not, this is going to occur when you're, when you're thinking about applying all the different LEDs. You want it really think about rendering with all your different LEDs in a tight circular motion because what this will enable you to do is to get a more solid blended kind of quality where it doesn't feel like it's fluctuating a lot okay um, and then you you're, you're gonna be able to go back and be subtractive and additive with your erasers and other LEDs but what you don't want to do is something like this or like this or where it's like sketchy or you're doing it fast, or that you just want to avoid that at all costs. You just, you want to it, it almost like kind of get into a, like a kind of a meditative state. And, and then just really start thinking about the pressure. So, you know, I'm altering the pressure right now, but I'm doing it in a tight circular motion. Okay, so I'm going darker, and then I'm gonna go lighter, like this. And then I'm gonna go darker and then I'm gonna go lighter. But I'm keeping it in a tight circular motion, okay? Um, and then this will add, this, this will enable you to have like really subtle transitions um, when you're building up the structure and the form and trying to describe it physically, okay? Um, it's also good because you can go back with your stomp or your blending tool and I'm barely using any pressure at all. And then I can bled the graphite together like this. Okay. Um, and then it will blend. So what basically when you, when you do it in the really tight circular kind of rendering like that, what it does is, is that you get a very even kind of quality throughout the, throughout. Okay. You, and then you can also use like your kneaded eraser if you want to go back and kind of, if you want to go back and lighten something up that you laid down. Okay, so you want to use all your tools to try to help you start defining and conveying the physicality of the form itself. Okay, and then even with my Statler eraser, I can go back and I can, if I want to like tighten up an edge or something like that. Okay. So it's just really important that you just, you start, what I would do is on a couple scrap pieces of paper that from when you cut down the sheet of your nine by 12 that you're gonna do the drawing on, just kind of practice and get yourself acquainted with the different leads and like kind of practice maybe laying down like what their values are and what they become and how dark they can get and vice versa. Um, and then, you know, really think about that idea of pressure and how you can start using pressure to start building up transitions in value, okay? Because that's, that's what's gonna bring a lot of physicality to the drawing itself, okay? So I would kind of just play around with your erasers and your different LEDs and just kind of get, try to figure out the physical attributes of what, what's occurring with them. So this is gonna be my nine by 12 sheet of drawing paper, okay? And I wanna, I'm gonna wanna kind of keep the scale of the form and the drawing to the scale of the actual object, okay? That's why you're doing it on a smaller piece of paper, okay? So you, you can't see it in the frame because I want you to be able to see how I start thinking about building up the drawing, but I have the garlic right over to the left of me here, 
Okay, so just right off the bat, okay? Remember, I'm using my two, my HB pencil, okay? And I'm just, all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to lay out the actual form itself. I'm just trying to get and describe the actual form itself. So that's why I'm doing it so lightly, okay? It's really, really, really important that you do not at all try to start doing any detail, that you start trying to show anything else, but just laying down the actual object and it's ground, how it's grounded on the ground plane. Um, so now I'm putting in the shape of what I'm seeing with the cast shadow. Okay, like out here like this. And then this is the core part of the cast shadow. Um, and then I'm just gonna start trying to articulate some of the skin on the actual garlic. Okay. So I just look and what I wanna do is I wanna check the shape, the proportions to the actual subject matter, look back and forth, look back at you know how I've laid out the cast shadow does it seem right? It does, basically, all I'm, all, I'm, all I'm doing is just, I'm just laying down a very rudimentary structural analysis of the form itself, okay? Because I'm gonna spend all the rest of the drawing trying to articulate and describe it as representationally as I can. And that's, that's what's gonna take the most time because I have to have so many different things that are occurring in terms of value transitions um and so on and so forth and so again I, i'm not there's no composition again i'm just i'm kind of if you again if you want to place it a little bit off center that's fine but i all i'm trying to do is just place it in the center it is the the main emphasis and focal point of the entire drawing that's the main subject matter um so again now i'm going to switch to my 2b pencil and i'm just basically going to start in a circular motion, just basically building up different values. Now I can go back with my 2B, with my HB, um, for the lightest areas and start trying to articulate the highest, lightest tones, okay? But again, what the most important thing about this drawing is really taking your time in terms of rendering. And you can see how long this is gonna take. Like it's gonna take two or three hours to do one drawing. Um, of this garlic. If I if I wanted to make if I really wanted to look really representational, okay. So I'm laying down. This is like going to be one of the lighter, higher tones. So you want to go back. You, you're building it up from its foundation, from light to dark, okay. Um, if if it's important for you to try to offset the lightest parts of the drawing, so you can really start thinking about balancing out the contrast. Um, I don't have a problem with you like going back and so basically the core part of the cast shadow underneath um, the garlic is basically basically going to be the darkest part of the whole drawing which is basically going to be black and so right now I'm just going to go back in just so you can see the range from like the lightest lights which are going to be the whiter your paper and then the lightest lights, which are going to be from HB moving up through 2B to 4B and 6B and whatever. So this is just going to be the core part of the cast shadow. And there's a couple little spots for, that are really dark, but there's nowhere else in the whole um, drawing that's going to be as dark as the core part of the cast shadow. And even, even the main cast shadow is actually like not even, it's more like almost like a, like a, maybe a 60 or a 70 percent gray okay but again you just want to make sure you don't do any sketchy rendering or anything like that you just you need to build up everything really gradually and really 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 slowly um so when i if when i go back if, if this is going to be to end up being the value or i need to be additive later for the cast shadow um when i if i go back you know and just imagine i fill in the whole cast shadow and then I go back and I use my blending tool and I blend the whole cast shadow. You can see that you're gonna get a really even flat value 
that will look like you're describing the fact that there's a cast shadow being cast on the flat ground plane. Um, so anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building this up gradually. I don't know if I'm going to finish the whole thing, but I just want you to see how it's built up. And I'm going to do a time-lapse video for that. So I laid out the whole form itself and obviously the shape of the cast shadow with my, with my HB pencil and I did it really, really, really lightly. I, I just, I, I can't stress that enough because if you start going too dark too soon, it's going to be a lot harder to be subtractive. And then I laid down some of the higher, lighter tones with my HB and remember I did it, when you watch the time-lapse video it looks it's hard to see me how I'm rendering but I'm I rendered with a very tight circular motion okay and that's what enabled me when I switched to my 4b pencil to do the cast shadow to get when I blended that value all together because I was it you in the time-lapse makes everything look like it's going really fast obviously but you just have to understand that it took a really long time because I was using a tight circular motion with the 4B pencil to build up that very even value and then to blend it with my stomp. And that's what got me that flat kind of even tone, which I can go back and if I want with my eraser and lighten areas, whatever. So I started out with my HB, laid out the whole thing, laid down my lighter tones, um, and then I switched to my 2B and I laid down some darker tones and then I switched to my 4B and I laid down the basic kind of darker value for the shadow and then I blended it with my blending stop. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do another time lapse. And again, I, I, I want to just, I, I can't stress this enough. When you're looking at time lapse, it's like, oh, that's not taking any time at all. Well, it's speeded up. So anything that, if a time lapse video is like, you know, 25 seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes or a half hour. Um, so it's taking a lot longer. Um, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to do another time lapse video. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see how I kind of build things up with all my different LEDs. I'm also going to introduce my um, my uh, click eraser and my other erasers to start taking. So you want to make sure um, that you don't have any heavy outlining of the outside contour. You want to create the outside contour edge, regardless of what other form you're drawing, um, with value. And you also want to fluctuate the edge um, because it will fluctuate depending on the light source illuminating it. And you just you want to make sure you just you, Whatever you do, do not outline the form because what that will do is it'll completely flatten it out. So always create the edges of the form with value. Um, and then again, you just, you're just trying to create a very full range in value from light to dark, lightest lights to darkest darks, um, and then a, as many neutral grays as you can in between. 